Hello, friends. Welcome to This Day in Jack Benny. I'm John Henderson. This episode is from December 6th, 1942. This was the last episode with Phil Harris and his band before they joined the Merchant Marines. The ships they are building will be the largest merchant fleet to ever sail the seven seas. Victory ships. Somewhere along the coastlines of this nation, a victory ship is sliding into the water every day. Tomorrow, two ships every day. Next month, three ships a day. Then four. Then more. One of the great shipbuilders was Henry Kaiser. Kaiser, the miracle shipbuilder, shows how his yards launch Liberty ships in record time. We don't know exactly what Phil Harris's duties were in the Merchant Marines, but it was more in the area of band leading and entertaining rather than shipbuilding and sailing. While he was gone, he would be replaced by various guest band leaders as the Benny program traveled from city to city on tour until Phil returned the following March. In addition to the great comedies and music programs on the air, you could often hear the President of the United States. Indeed, in these days, when every available dollar should go to the war effort, I do not think that any American citizen should have a net income in excess of $25,000 per year after payment of taxes. That was the U.S. President Roosevelt. In Japan, the leader was Emperor Hirohito. Look carefully at this man. He's the Emperor of Japan. If these pictures serve to kindle a flame of vengeance throughout the civilized world, they will have served their purpose. Let the cry be vengeance! Bloody vengeance! With the war in full swing, anti-Japanese propaganda and prejudice was at an all-time high. Then from out of the West came another partner to make a silly axis of himself. I a Japanese a sap a man. I'm a little crazy too. In this episode, they mentioned the actress Joan Bennett. They came to see me about the USO campaign. They wanted me to help. I just couldn't refuse. And Anne Sheridan, the co-star of Jack Benny's new movie, George Washington Slept Here. This house, can't you see yourself coming down the road on an autumn night? Captain Kidd was an infamous pirate. Dead men don't talk. Man your oars, we got this job to do before high tide. That was from the Charles Lawton Captain Kidd movie coming out a few years later. And finally, fashion-savvy listeners will know all about the V-shaped weave, the herringbone weave, one of the many fabric styles you could choose from when buying a casual suit jacket. If you'd like to contact me, you can find my info at thisdaybenny.com, where you can also listen to all the old Jack Benny episodes. So grab a patriotic bowl of Grape Nuts Flakes and enjoy the show. The Grape Nuts Flakes program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, another Grape Nuts Flakes fable, friends, by that old spinner of fables, Don Wilson. This one's about a little appetite and how he grew. You see, uh, this little appetite was very, very sad because he stayed so small, and he was always going around wailing, Woe's me, woe's me, why can't I grow up and be like other appetites? Then one day, a kind lady gave this little appetite a great big tempting bowl full of delicious, toasty brown grape nut flakes, and quick as a wink, that little appetite grew and grew and grew until all at once he said, Oh boy, grape nut flakes, today I am a man. Well... (laughs) The moral of that fable is just this. If any appetites need special coaxing at your house, the thing to do is to serve plenty of delicious, moldy, rich grape nut flakes. For the distinctive goodness of grape nut flakes really makes appetites grow. It's the grand, tempting flavor of grape nuts in toasty, brown, crispy flake form. So ask your grocer for grape nut flakes tomorrow. It's a grand old flag played by the orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as is my custom, every Sunday night at this time... Hold it, Don. Hold it. Hold it. Tonight's introduction is for our good old maestro. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to announce that this is the farewell appearance of Phil Harris on this program. As Phil and his band have joined the United States Maritime Service, they're in the Merchant Marine. Well, that's, uh, that's for you and the boys, Phil. Thanks, everybody. And speaking for the whole gang and myself, I want to say that we've had a lot of fun on this program, and we're sure going to miss it. Ah, uh, we're going to miss you, too, Phil. That's right. You and I may have had our little quarrels, and we may have gotten pretty sore at each other at times. But I'll tell you one thing, Phil. You're the best band leader I ever worked with. Oh, Jackson, you're kidding. I know, but you're leaving tonight. <laughs> But on the level, things won't be the same around here without good old Twitch. Say, how long, uh, how long you been, uh, <laughs> how long you been with me, Phil? Six years. Six years. Six years without a raise. <laughs> yes, sir. And now you and the boys are leaving. Gosh, I, I feel like a mother robin. A mother robin whose eggs have all hatched. And the little birds are flying away. Make that ducks, will you? We're in the Merchant Marine. <laughs> All right, I feel like a mother duck. Uh, what'd you just say, Jack? Oh, hello, Mary. I was just telling Phil that I feel like a mother duck. Well, you've got the right feet for us. <laughs> I don't mean that. I'm being sentimental. Phil and the boys have joined the Maritime Service. Well, congratulations, Phil. Thanks. Hey, Mary, how do you like my new uniform? Pretty natty, ain't it? Yeah. I never thought I'd see the day when you'd wear a coat with pants to match. <laughs> what? Including your tuxedo. You're not fooling. Oh, say, Phil, what did you do with that loud sport coat you used to wear? You mean my herringbone? No, your tuna fish with the smelt in the back. <laughs> Hey, hey, that's, that's, that's pretty good, huh? Please, Jackson, no corn tonight. Huh? Okay, Phil. Uh, by the way, where are you stationed, Phil? We're training over at Catalina Island under Captain B.B. And what a routine they put you through. The first day, there was a guy that says, go see the doc and he'll give you a few shots. A few shots, So eh? I go over to the doc's office, say, where's the bourbon? And the guy jabs me with a needle. <laughs> Well, of course. Of course, that's what they meant, shots in the arm. Did the shots bother you, Phil? No, I took them like they was nothing. Mm. But when they cut off my curls, I cried like a baby. <laughs> that's right. That's right, Phil. You have got a regulation haircut. I mean, a little bone is showing. <laughs> Uh, incidentally, uh, incidentally, old pal, uh, what did you do with those curls, hmm? Forget it, Jack. They'll never match. <laughs> Mary, I just want a lock of Phil's hair to remember him by. I'm sentimental. I told you I feel like a mother duck. Say, Phil, how are you and the boys getting along with your training? Oh, we're sharp, Jackson. Get a load of this. All right, men. Ten. Shun. Salute. One. Two. Well. Okay, man, as you was. <laughs> All right, sit down, fellas, sit down. As you was. Am you sure you didn't make a mistake, Phil? Well, it's a great life, though, Phil. It'll do you a lot of good. Oh, hello. Hello, Dennis. How are you feeling? Just ducky, Mother. <laughs> Hmm. Say, Mr. Benny, I passed Warner Brothers Theater just now, and there's a sign there that says, George Washington slept here, staring Anne Sheridan and the world's greatest lover. That's right. Well, gee whiz, I thought you were in that picture. <laughs> I am. That's me, the world's greatest lover. That's something new, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's nothing new. It just happens that the studios finally realize that I'm the lover type. The lover type? Yes. Somehow I prefer to think of you as a mother duck. <laughs> no, don't be silly. And everything you say just rolls off of me. I can go along with a duck. <laughs> say, Jack, I saw your picture, and there's just one thing I can't understand. 
What's that, Don? Well, in those scenes you did with Ann Sheridan where she was wearing an evening gown, I couldn't see your face. Well, what do you mean? You're always standing behind her. Why was that? Well... Jack had his lines written on her back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had some long scenes. You try to talk and make love at the same time. Say, Dennis, have you, uh, have you seen my picture yet? No, I haven't, Mr. Benny. Hmm. You haven't, eh? Hmm. And now, folks... Am I going to get bumped off? <laughs> no! <laughs> I don't care whether you see it or not, you little... What do I care? Now, turn around, sing your song. I wouldn't turn around for a million dollars. <laughs> I'm not going to kick you. Now, go ahead. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, I will now Who sing... cares what you sing? Just do it, that's all. Now, I've seen that picture ten times. He can't see it once. <laughs> Getting tired so I can sleep I want to sleep so I can dream I want to dream so I can be with you I've got your picture by my bed Will soon be placed beneath my head to keep me company the whole night through For a little while, whatever before I will see you smile till reveille cold I hope you're tired enough to Long enough to dream and look for me, or I'll be dreaming too of lips that once were mine, tender eyes that shine. They will lie my way. I'm Getting Tired So I Can Sleep, sung by Dennis Day. And now, folks... How'd you like my song, Mr. Benny? How'd you like my picture? <laughs> I told you I didn't see it. Well, I didn't hear your song, either. <laughs> and now, folks... Holy smoke, he's deaf. <laughs> I am not. And now, folks, I would like to announce that tomorrow we're all leaving for New York. And for the next several weeks, we'll be broadcasting from Army camps, uh, Navy and Marine bases throughout the East. Now, fellas, uh, you must realize how crowded the trains are nowadays and how tough it is to get transportation. So we'll all have to be satisfied with riding in the baggage car. Right? Oh, Jack, your idea will never work out. Well, we can try it, can't we? What is his idea, Mary? Jack's going to put us in a big crate, and we have to bark when the conductor comes by. <laughs> now, that's just plain silly. We're not going to make off like dogs. This is a fine time to tell me I bought a license this morning. You, 
You bought a dog license? Mail. Well, naturally. <laughs> anyway, we're leaving tomorrow for the East, and that's that. You know, Jackson, me and the boys are sure going to miss going with you. Well, we're going to miss you too, Phil. Just think. Our last week with Harris. And look, fellas, that reminds me. I owe a little money around here, and I might as well get things straightened up. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait till I get my book out. <laughs> <laughs> here it is. Here it is. H, H here. Phil Harris, $4. Now, Don, uh, you picked up a dinner check at Harry's Steakhouse last week, and it amounted to seven fifty. Here, dollars uh, Here's your money. Oh, forget it, Phil. Forget it. The treat was on me. Well, thanks, Don. Hmm. <laughs> and Mary, uh, I had you buy some handkerchiefs for Alice uh, How much does that come to? Oh, never mind, Phil Let's call it a little present and forget it Gee, thanks, Mary Hmm <laughs> Well, you're next, Jackson What do you get down against me in that little book of yours? Well, it's four dollars, Phil But... Forget. Forget about it. <laughs> Forget it. I, I don't want your money. No, no. Now, come on, Jackson. I owe you the dough, so here it is. Well. Oh, forget it, Phil. <laughs> forget it. Hmm. Well, gee, Jackson, that's marvelous. You're a swell guy. Don't swell guy me. I'm on a spot, and you know. <laughs> I'll just scratch your name out of this book here. Say, Mr. Benny, how come Mr. Harris owes you $4? Well... Uh, three years ago, Phil got Jack a date with a girl and she picked his pocket. <laughs> she was a tall blonde with the longest fingers. <laughs> now, uh, remember, fellas, I'll probably bump into her, but when will I be in Monrovia again? <laughs> <laughs> Now, remember, remember, fellas, uh, we're leaving tomorrow, so be at the Santa Fe station a half hour before train time. We'll have lunch on the train. Oh, pardon me, Jack, but why can't we make that a late breakfast? A late breakfast? Said he, falling into the trap like an absent-minded elephant. <laughs> uh, what do you mean, Don? Well, if we can make it breakfast, we can all sit down to a nice big bowl of toasty brown sweet as a nut, grape <laughs> nuts flakes. And do you know what they come in, Jack? No, Don, said Benny with a merry twinkle in his big blue eyes. <laughs> uh, what do they come in? Grape nuts flakes come in that big 12-ounce economy size package and contain iron, niacin, and vitamin B1. Well, I'll be one too, Don. <laughs> anyway, fellas, getting back to our trip to New York. Come in. Telegram for Jack Benny. Sign for it, Mary. Wait a minute, buddy. Uh, here's a nickel for you. I can't take it. That'll put me over the 25,000 mark. <laughs> I, uh, I should have known he was wealthy with those ermine leggings. <laughs> uh, who, uh... Who's the uh, wire from, Mary? Uh, it's from the Acme Plaza Hotel in New York. Oh. It says, Dear Mr. Benny, understand you are coming to New York next week. We have lovely rooms here with a bath on every floor. Just follow the arrow. <laughs> oh, yes, the Acme Plaza. We also have dancing nightly in the zebra room. Well. So bring your zebra and have a good time. <laughs> With a zebra? <laughs> Let us know if you are coming, as we have wall beds and it takes some time to get them down. <laughs> hey, I, I might stay there at that. The Acme Plaza is one of the finest, so... I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. <laughs> what do you want? I went downstairs to pack your trunk like you told me to, and the polar bear is sleeping in it. <laughs> Carmichael in my trunk? Well, get him out of there. How? What do you mean, how? Have you any suggestions that won't involve my brother inheriting my new wristwatch? <laughs> Carmichael won't bite you. Just tickle him and he'll jump out. I wouldn't tickle that bear with Hitler's mustache. <laughs> All right, then lay out my clothes and I'll pack when I get home. <laughs> 
that reminds me, Mr. Benny, you better buy some pajamas. I don't have to buy pajamas. I got six pair back from the laundry with my mon monogram on them. J.B. That was a mistake. They belong to Miss Joan Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. You mean to say that last night I slept in girls' pajamas? Boss, you were a vision. <laughs> Well, I'll return them to Miss Bennett immediately. Now, Rochester, I hear it's pretty chilly in New York, so pack all my heavy things. I don't want to catch cold. Don't worry, boss. I even sewed your long underwear all the way up to the neck so no wind can blow through. <laughs> sewed up my long underwear? How am I going to get into it? There's a trap door in the back. <laughs> Well, look. Well, look. Um, look, Rochester. Rochester, get all my stuff together and I'll finish packing when I get home. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? I told that crazy border of ours that we were going to be away for about eight weeks. Mr. Billingsley, how did he take it? Oh, fine. He chewed up a handful of mothballs and zipped himself in a bag. <laughs> oh, well, he'll keep till we get home. So long, Rochester. So long. Darn that guy. If you want to get things done, you got to do them yourself. Play, Phil. <laughs> was Victory Fleet, the theme song of the United States Merchant Marine. Say, Phil, uh, just what do you fellas do in the maritime service at Catalina? Well, you see, Jackson, in shipyards all over the country, they're, they're nervous building. tonight, you know, because it's the last night. Jackson is the name. You've been saying it for six <laughs> may years. May I start now. over again? Yes, you may. Go ahead, Phil. Well, you see, Jackson, uh -huh. in shipyards all over the country, they're building hundreds of Liberty ships. Uh -huh. And over at the island, they train the crews that are going to man them. Those cargoes have really got to keep moving. You said it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction this evening, and as a special tribute to Phil and the boys, we will present a play about the maritime service entitled Liberty Ship. Or pull in your neck, there's a porthole around it. <laughs> now, Mary, uh, Mary, inasmuch as we're short of actors, you'll have to be a man in our sketch. I don't want to be a man. You'll be a sailor like the rest of us. Okay, Captain Kidd. I'm not, I'm not a captain. You're not a kid, kid either. either. I know. <laughs> well, just for that, I, I'm going to be the captain. Now, Dennis. Aye, aye, sir. Don't aye, aye me because you're not going to be on my ship. <laughs> you're going to play the part of a Japanese admiral. <laughs> a Japanese admiral? Yes. Last week I was a German general. Now I'm a Japanese admiral. What's the big idea? Go see my picture, kid, and you'll get better parts. <laughs> You're going to be a Jap. It's only a play. Now, our first scene, ladies and gentlemen, takes place at the Henry Kaiser Shipyard 
in the little town of Military Secret, California. <laughs> we will now show you the amazing speed with which a Liberty ship is constructed. Take it away, Kaiser Shipyard. Hey, Joe, there's an empty space right here. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's build a ship on it. Okay, start riveting. <laughs> riveting all through. Okay, start welding. <laughs> welding all through. Okay, start painting. Painting all through. Okay, let's launch it. <laughs> and that, folks, is a typical five minutes at a Kaiser ship. <laughs> My writers did that. Very good, too, boys. Very good. Gee, they were able to stand up, too. I guess. Uh, scene, uh, scene two aboard that same Liberty ship, somewhere in the ocean. Music. <laughs> Sailing, sailing over the bounding main. Da diddly dum da dum da. Oh, Wilson, Wilson. Yes, Captain Betty. Did you jib the spinnaker like I told you to? Aye, aye, sir. Good. Did you scuttle the mizzen mast and port the starboard? <laughs> aye, aye, sir. Good. Now get busy and deck the swab. <laughs> Let's swab the decks. I am the captain here. Get busy. <laughs> hmm. Three bells already. Three bells? What's that in regular time, Captain? Yes, sir. Now get busy. <laughs> Oh, hello, Seaman Livingston. Hello, cop. That's cap. And salute. Salute when you address me. Get your hand up to your forehead. Like this? No, higher. <laughs> I want discipline, and I'm going to have it. Where's Seaman Phil Harris? He's up on the poop deck, drinking pop. <laughs> Well, <laughs> well, well, I'm going downstairs. I mean, below, to get something to eat. Oh, you better eat later, Captain. There's a bad storm blowing up. I don't care. When I want to eat, I want to eat. You sure picked a nice year for us. <laughs> Never mind. Were well, you looking for me, Cap? Yes, Harris. We're just going down to have some chow. Come on, Libby, Harris. Let's get something to eat. Here's the gallery. I mean, galley. <laughs> right here. What are we having for dinner, Libby? It's right there on the table. Oh, boy. Fried chicken, our rotten potatoes, cream spinach, and mince pie with ice cream. Let's dig in. Oh, it's blowing up bad now. Oh, wow, this boat is sure rocking. Yeah, it sure is. Well, start eating, Captain. I thought you were hungry. Who, me? <laughs> I feel fine. <laughs> Wow, we're sure pitching. This ship can really take it. Oh, Phil, pass me the gravy. It's in your lap. Uh oh. <laughs> Here you are, Libby. Hey, Cap, aren't you going to eat it all? No, no thanks. Not right. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at, Libby? Lucky Strike Green has gone to your face. <laughs> I don't care. I'm going to weather the storm, and I'm going to bring this ship to port, or my name ain't... Oh, boy, we're making marvelous time. A couple of more days, and we'll be at the... Harris, what are you doing there? I'm fishing, sir. I just took the big one, and he pulled a knife on me. That's a swordfish. <laughs> Fine fisherman. Hey, Phil, you've got another bite. And it's a big one. Reel it in, reel it in. I got him, I got him. Wow, it must be a shark. Pull it up, pull it over the rail. Wow, it's a shark, all right. Shark's nothing, it's one of them little Jap submarines. <laughs> I'll be darned, it is a Jap sub. Open the hatch, Wilson. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> now, come on out, you. Come on out. Hello, peekaboo, please. Ah, oh, talk about it, watch my... <laughs> It's a jab. Grab him, Wilson. I got him. Now listen, you. Hey, Cap, there's someone else in 
that sub. Oh, yes. Come on out, you. Come on. Hi, Ro. How to do? Which way, Tokyo, please? <laughs> oh, boy, we got two of them. Now, which one of you is the captain? Ah, uh, me, Captain, uh, Captain Yokomoto, Imperial Savonese Navy. Well, I'll talk you very much. I hear that. Now, listen, Captain. Mm -hmm. Big pardon, please. Me, Captain, Captain Takasuba. Thank you very much, oh, me, Captain. Oh, so sorry, Takasuba. Begging pardon, please, but me, Captain. No, 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 please. Me, Captain. 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 Wait a minute, can a straight man break in here? <laughs> oh, oh, so sorry, please, so sorry. I don't care which one of you is, Captain, you're both under arrest. Arrest? Yes. On the Verstein's <laughs> again, and the Verstein's 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 again, and the What? Right in Hirohito's face. Come on, you two, you're going in a break. Friends, your most precious assets these strenuous days are your good humor and your good health. And one way to safeguard both humor and health is to see that your folks get the right start each day with a delicious, nourishing breakfast. For a full share of well-balanced nourishment, make it a breakfast that includes grape nuts flakes. Because well-balanced nourishment is what you get in every helping of toasty brown grape nuts flakes and milk. You get proteins and minerals, such as iron, calcium, and phosphorus. And you get two of the important B vitamins, niacin and vitamin B1 for good appetite, steady nerves, and energy. So for better health and better humor, you'd better say, I'll take a package of Grape Nuts Flakes. <laughs> That was the last number of the 10th program in the new Grape Nuts Flake series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time, broadcasting from New York. I'd like to salute the officers and men at the new Maritime Training Station, which is being dedicated at Catalina Island on December 15th. Good luck to you men, and good luck to you, Phil Harris, and all your boys. Thanks, Jackson. We'll be seeing you. Good night, folks. <laughs> The Jack Benny program is written by Bill Morrow and Ed Beloyd.